Hey, this is Lewis Cole with World Branch, and I wanted to thank you for checking out my video today. If you prefer to fix things rather than pay someone else to do it for you, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video. Also, if you look in the description below, I provided a discount link to my eBay store where you can find hundreds of tools. Hopefully, you'll find the right tool to fix whatever problem you're trying to resolve. So, enjoy the video, and I hope it, uh, it fixes your issue. Hello everyone, this is Lewis Cole with World Branch, and uh, this is my beautiful Yamaha V-Star 650 Classic uh, 2003. Um, and what this video is going to be about today is helping you get your bike restarted after a uh, long cold winter of it sitting in the garage. Uh, this is part of my uh, Fix Things series that, uh, that I try to help you all uh, get things fixed so you don't have to pay someone else to do it. Um, so we're going to go through a few steps here, uh, some a little basic because uh, you may have forgotten some things uh, over the winter of how to actually operate your bike. You know, no offense, but it happens. And then uh, I've got some other uh, more in-depth troubleshooting steps that will uh, help you out as we, uh, as we go along. So enjoy the video and I hope this helps you out for, uh, for what you're trying to do. Alright, so today we're going to get the motorcycle started after a winter of storage in the in the garage. Hopefully you've been starting over time, but if it's not starting for you, then there's some, uh, some simple steps to remember. Uh, I'll go a little bit more in depth today. Uh, remember, I am not a motorcycle professional, I'm not a mechanic or anything like that. I'm just a motorcycle owner and I uh, just wanted to sort of help you guys out to try to get your bike started after a while. Now, uh, some of the common problems that uh, people have, is, as basic as this seems, um, is they'll forget some of the, some of the uh, basic settings that you need to make sure that your motorcycle does actually start. Um, if it's not turning over at all, of course, you're going to make sure that your key is to that on position. If it's still not turning on, make sure you turn the power switch to the on position. If it's still not starting for you, you want to make sure that the bike is in neutral. Now at least that'll get it to turn over, but if you don't pull out the choke, if you do have a choke, pull the choke out and make sure it can it gets plenty of fuel. And then also make sure your fuel cock is in the on position and not set to off, otherwise it won't get any fuel. So remembering that should be able to start your bike. Now of course this is after I've done all the work to it that I'm about to show you through this video um, and I'm about to show you a few extra steps you can go through to uh, to get your bike started up and uh, hopefully get it running for you before the warm season kicks in. Alright, so one of the main problems after sitting all winter is uh, is the battery. You know, sometimes the, the battery can die after sitting for so long. Um, and um, sometimes you might just have to jump it or you might have to put it on a battery maintainer or a charger to let it charge back up or maybe you, maybe you need a new battery. But uh, most bikes, the uh, the battery is underneath the seat, specifically on the Yamaha. It's right here in this uh, this pretty white box that's, uh, that's here on the side or underneath the, the seat on the right side. Um, it's real easy to get off. Sometimes it might be a little tricky, but you see there's one bolt that I've already loosened up here. Um, you take that out, and then uh, there's one other place that is built into the back of the box to make sure it stays on. So it might seem like it's fighting you, but you just got to pop it off uh, with your hand like this. If you're strong enough, you got to fight it a little bit. It'll eventually pop off, and then there's one more grab point here to the bottom. But if it's... Uh, Yamaha V-Star 2003 and this is how you get your battery box off. Like I said, it might be a little tricky at first, but it's that one little grab point there that holds on to it at the top side and that one little bolt at the uh, bottom left side. And then there's your battery. Uh, like I said, uh, positive post, negative post. You can either jump it from uh, another vehicle or we'll put it on a battery maintainer uh, and let it charge for a couple of days to uh, get it going again. 
Okay, so we know that there are two things that a uh, uh, gasoline engine needs, and that's fuel and air, uh, both to work properly. Um, before messing with the fuel, you probably want to look at the air because it's a little bit easier to deal with. Um, on the Yamaha um, VSAR, the air filter's on the side. Of course, your bike could be uh, could be a little different, but um, I wanted to show you a, uh, a way to... Um, check the air filter uh, to make sure there's no obstructions to make sure that your bike is able to breathe properly so uh, here specifically on my filter like I said your filter might be a little different but um, there are three hex screws that are uh, here on the cap and then there's one underneath as well um, that's that's simply how you uh, how you remove the cap to your air filter Okay, now that we have the air filter cap removed, we can actually see the air filter. Um, simply just uh, just twist it and pull it off. Like I said, your bike might be different, but make sure there's no, no obstructions. Make sure it's nice and clean and that uh, plenty of air can get into the carburetor, which is right underneath the, uh, the air filter uh, uh, component. Um, now I'm going to show you a, uh, a more, uh, more in-depth perspective as to what you can do to hopefully get your cold bike started if it's giving you a lot of trouble. Alright, so I feel like I owe it to you guys to, uh, to actually show you to, uh, how to use starting fluid in your, in, your, in your engine if it's not starting for you correctly. Uh, so as you see, I had the air filter off here. I'm going to attempt to start my bike and you can see it's giving me a little bit of trouble. Not wanting to start, even though I have the I have the choke completely out there. It's a little cold right now. It's about 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little bit of starter fluid here into the uh, into the air filter right there into the carburetor, and then we'll see if this works out for us. See how it picked up just a little bit there. The engine got a little excited. I have traced the issue in the fuel lines to the fuel petcock that you find over on the left side of the bike. Um, not being able to get any fuel to the engine, I was uh, tracing back the fuel line. And fortunately, I found the problem uh, very quickly. Looks like the fuel cock has disintegrated on me a little bit. So... I'm going to uh, I'm going to replace that thing today and see if it helps me get this thing started. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the fuel line from the petcock. Now, obviously, you want to have the petcock in the in the off position. Um, that way, you don't have fuel uh, spilling out on you once you do uh, pull the line off. That makes it a little bit easier to get yourself situated so you can get your fuel into the, your uh, reserve fuel can that's sitting down here. You see this line is attached by, by a clamp. So if we take a pair of pliers, slide that clamp back and away from the petcock. All right. Now if you have your petcock properly positioned off, whenever you pull the line off, then you should have little to no drippage uh, come out. Now, now once you get that off, you position your your funnel underneath and then you turn on your fuel line. Now, since I don't have enough hands to do all this at once, I'm going to go ahead and drain my fuel out. But just so you know, once you turn your fuel cock to the uh, reserve position, which will get the fuel out of the very bottom of the tank, it'll start coming out of this copper colored tube right here. Now that we have the fuel drained from the tank, or at least most of it, um, now it's time to remove the fuel petcock from the tank. You have two screws, one on each side. One here, and one here. And at least on mine, they are Phillips screws. So, um, make sure you have your reserve tank ready to take any excess fuel that will come out once you, uh, once you remove the fuel cock from the bottom of the tank. And then, uh, capture that fuel and then it'll be time to put in the new petcock. So this is how you know that you have a problem. On the left is the fuel petcock that I just pulled out of the motorcycle. As you can see, the screen to the upper filter is completely gone. Um, everything looks completely corroded, and it's probably a good reason why my motorcycle was not getting enough fuel. As you see, the new one is 
nice, new, clean, no, uh, no corrosion. The uh, the upper filter is completely intact. The screen is still there, and uh, looks like it's ready to be installed. Make sure to uh, recover the two bolts that uh, came out of the old one, as the new one uh, may not necessarily come come with the uh, with the new petcock. Okay, so now I have my new fuel uh, petcock uh, with the old screws in it. I'm ready to install it back up into the gas tank where it belongs. All I gotta do is just screw those two screws in, make sure they're nice and tight. The gasket will seal the fuel from coming out and we'll be ready to go. All right, now that I got the new fuel petcock in place, got it screwed into the tank where it belongs, I'm gonna replace the fuel line to the engine and then of course use my pliers to put that clip right back where it belongs, sealing the line to the petcock. All right, now that I've added the fuel back in, give the petcock just a a quick uh, <clears throat> a quick functions check just to make sure it's not leaking. <clears throat> I'm turn it. I think I just had some residual fuel come out there from where I did reattach it. But I'm turning it, I'm not having any sort of leakage. Everything's fine. Of course, you want to inspect the uh, you want to inspect the area whenever you do put your fuel back into the tank to make sure nothing's leaking from where it's attached. Now we should be able to try to start it. And I just wanted to show you that I had success with my steps. Uh, got everything uh, put together right. Got everything set in the right place. And now we're going to start it up. So we got the key in the on position. Power in the on position. Just so you remember, like I said at the beginning of the video, you need to pull that choke out. You need to make sure your fuel cock is in the on position as well. So things, uh, some simple things that you can tend to forget, as well as make sure the bike is in neutral otherwise you would have to hold down the clutch obviously or you go to start it just to show you that uh everything worked exactly the way i wanted it to and of course once it once it warms up you're gonna want to close that choke otherwise it's gonna burn too rich and there you go. Hopefully that was easier for you.